Welcome back to the first half of chapter two. We're nearing the end of this portion of the chapter where we're going to finish up introducing the new concepts that will stick with us all semester. What this video focuses on is section 2.4, the idea of acceleration, both how we define it um, and how it's used in graphical uh, questions, the way that we were dealing with position time graphs before. We will introduce a new graph in this lecture video. So up until, up until this point, we have introduced basically this set of terms. And it would be really useful for you either right now, pause the video, or at some point before you get too far ahead in the material to make sure that when you see these terms, you kind of understand the concept behind what they mean. And for many of them, there are specific equations. Make sure that you can find those equations and recognize them in homework and quizzes and tests, anything that we do in this class, you are not expected to memorize equations. For assignments, you have access to your textbook and your notes. You can just look up those equations. And for tests, there's equation sheets that we provide as well. So when we think about all of these different terms, we're basically adding new ideas as we go. Position was our starting point. And we thought about displacement as a change in position. And then we thought about velocity as a change in displacement, or rather a displacement over an elapsed time. What we're adding now is the idea of acceleration, which is a change in velocity over an elapsed time. So here's the definition from the textbook. It not only uses this delta idea that we've seen already in previous lecture video, but it also writes it out in terms of final minus initial, the way that change in physics works. And I want us to think about these two questions on the slide. What are the units for acceleration? If we look at how the equation is built, velocity is in units of meters per second, and time is in units of seconds. And so acceleration is in units of meters per second per second or meters per second squared. So the seconds unit on the bottom is squared. And then I want you to think about if acceleration is a scalar or a vector quantity. Since velocity is a vector quantity and we're thinking about how that changes, that means that we're also going to care about the direction. Acceleration is a vector quantity. So one of the biggest things that students struggle with with this initial concept is the difference between deceleration and negative acceleration. And so I really, really need us to make sure to pay attention closely here because it's one of the most common mistakes in the concept portion of this, um, of this idea. So the three terms listed on our slide are all separate ideas, and they all generally fall under the umbrella term of acceleration, which is the most generic idea. Acceleration is simply a change in velocity over time. Deceleration is a fancy way of saying we are slowing down. Negative acceleration only means that the arrow points in the negative direction, and positive acceleration only means that the arrow points in the positive direction. So I want us to think about, for each of these questions, which cars on our slide fit these four different statements. So I want you to pause the video and actually write out your um, estimation for each of these. That way you have a clear check to yourself in your notes if this is making sense or not. So pause the video and read through all of these um, questions and choose one or more letters that fit that question. Okay, as always, when I suggest pausing the video, if you're able to, it is a really good idea to do that. Give yourself time to think through these ideas and then continue. If this were in class, this would be a moment where we actually do all stop and we're given time to think through things and put it into our notes. So 
try to recreate that same idea. This is not just watching a video for the sake of it. It's, it's interacting as best you can. Okay, so which of any uh, situations show positive acceleration? So as a reminder from the previous slide, positive acceleration means that the arrow is pointing in the positive direction. So we're basically asking which of these cars have that purple acceleration arrow pointing to the right. That would be car A and car C for the first question. Next question, which if any of the situations show negative acceleration. Negative acceleration only means that that acceleration arrow points to the left. That would be car B and car D. Now, this is where we are introducing this new idea of how we can easily tell when things are speeding up or slowing down. If the velocity and acceleration vector point in the same direction as each other, then the object that we're caring about, whether it's a pink car or anything else, if they point in the same direction, that object will speed up. So with that in mind, and we might not have uh, been able to intuit that yet, and that's perfectly fine, but with that in mind, the cars that are speeding up is car A, both of those point to the right, and car D, both of those point to the left. And then in which situations is the car slowing down? Slowing down is when the velocity vector and the acceleration vector point in opposite directions. For these cars, that would be car B, which is slowing down as it drives to the right, and car C, which is slowing down as it drives to the left. With those in mind, and if you didn't write them all down, it probably is a good idea to rewind and try that again. We wanna look down and recognize that there are situations where slowing down and negative acceleration are happening, but there were just as many situations where that was not the case. We either had negative acceleration and we were speeding up, or we had positive acceleration and we were slowing down. Those are not interchangeable terms. So this slide kind of summarizes that for us, and I'm not gonna read through every word on this slide. They're posted um, on Blackboard and you can pause and write it down if you need to. But it's basically going through all of the possible situations. And here, instead of pink cars, we have it written out kind of in words. All right. So in general, acceleration as a word is any kind of change in velocity. That could mean that we're speeding up it could mean that we're slowing down, or it could mean that we're turning a corner, we're changing direction. We will not be dealing with that third idea um, very often in this chapter, but it will get, uh, we'll get to it quite a lot in chapter three and even more so in chapter six. All right, so our first basically problem solving with the definition of acceleration. Suppose a car is traveling in a straight line in the positive direction. One thing we wanna train ourselves to do, and we're gonna see this all throughout the second half of chapter two, is to draw a picture of the situation even as we are reading through the question. So we draw a little um, car sketch, or at the very least, we draw an arrow pointing to the right for velocity, and we label it with V because we're driving in the positive direction. It starts at rest and speeds up to 20 meters per second in five seconds. What is its average acceleration? So the car has an initial velocity of zero. It may be worth, if it wasn't immediately obvious reading through the question, it may be worth writing out in your notes that when we see the phrase at rest, we want our heads to immediately tell us that means zero meters per second. So the initial velocity is zero, the final velocity is 20 meters per second, and the elapsed time is five seconds. So when we're writing that out, we would have 20 minus zero on top of the equation and five on the bottom of the equation. 20 divided by five gives us positive four meters per second squared. So this is what that graph would look like 
where we are looking at how the velocity changes as a function of time. This is a new graph type that we're going to be spending some time with in this lecture video. And the slope of a velocity time graph is the acceleration. So when we had that previous type of graph, completely different type of graph, position versus time, the slope gave us velocity. This is a new type of graph, and so a velocity time graph, the slope, gives us acceleration. Now if we think about this situation, a car that is driving in the positive direction and speeding up, which of the four cars fits that description? Hopefully we said car A. This is the um, most common situation we might see for initial problems, where we will tend to have all of our cars be driving to the right, and some of the time it'll speed up and some of the time they'll slow down. All right, so let's have a whole new car. Now we're traveling in a straight line in the positive direction. So pause the video and I want you to think through that. The very best way to approach problems so that they don't feel overwhelming is to draw the situation and add information as you read it. So this very first sentence, suppose a new car is traveling in a straight line in the positive direction. It means we draw a car. Doesn't have to be a very good car. And it's driving in the positive direction. So the velocity is in the positive direction. Your sketch does not have to take much time and it does not have to look that complicated. The most important thing is the arrow itself. All right, so it is moving 20 meters per second. The very first thing we learn about that car, when we first noticed it, when we first started talking about it, it is moving at 20 meters per second. So that is our initial velocity. And it takes six seconds to come to a stop. Stop means that the final velocity is zero meters per second. So anytime we hear the word stops or stopped, that tells us zero meters per second. And the elapsed time was six seconds. If we look at the very definition of acceleration, it is v final minus v initial over the elapsed time. So we plug in our numbers. We have 0 minus 20 divided by 6. That means that our answer, when we use our calculator, is negative 3.33 meters per second squared. To be a full and complete answer, we need the negative sign because that arrow for acceleration is pointing in the opposite direction as the car slows down. The 3.33 is the number value, and then we always, always need to put units on our answer. The drawing that best fits this we're looking for a car that was initially driving to the right but is slowing down. That would be drawing B. And then for does our answer seem reasonable, that's something that we will have to build an intuition for over time. Now, we have a pretty good sense for velocity numbers in terms of what is fast and what is slow, especially if they're given to us in miles per hour. We know that if we're driving a car, 15 miles per hour is very slow and 70 miles per hour is very fast. We know that because there are speed, limit, speed limits posted everywhere that gives us a sense of those number values at um, any given time. And on our dashboard, we have a little dial that tells us our speed. Acceleration, on the other hand, is a situation where we really don't have a good intuition initially in the semester to know what is a big acceleration versus what is a small acceleration. So we just want to recognize that that's going to be a skill we want to develop over time. As we get more and more of these examples, we'll start to see similar numbers 
a range of values that is reasonable for cars. But we do also want to recognize that acceleration values that are reasonable for cars are a totally different range of acceleration values for other objects. So let's imagine throwing a um, rubber ball against a wall. We throw it at the wall, it bounces, and it comes back to us. What that means is that the initial velocity is in one direction and the final velocity is in the opposite direction. The two different velocities, one of them has to have a positive number and one of them has to have a negative number. This is probably one of the most common mistakes that students make when they don't put any sketch or drawing in their problem solving. And we're gonna see that that is a really important part of our problem solving process. So let's think about this one if we can. We throw a basketball towards the wall at 20 meters per second. And after the bounce, it moves away from the wall at 15 meters per second. It was in contact with the wall for 0 0.02 seconds, two hundredths of a second. With these numbers in mind, I want you to pause the video and calculate the average acceleration of the basketball while it is, while it is touching the wall. Okay, so we introduced the trick in the previous slide here. And I need you to look at your notes and hopefully you tried this one and not, you're not just letting the video play, but I need you to look at your notes and see if you gave a negative number, a negative sign in front of either the 20 meters per second or the 15. One of them must be negative or you will not get the correct answer. And it's a really big physics error when that happens. You could have set up the problem to have the wall on the right side of your page, which means it was moving to the right and ends up moving to the left. Or you could have had the wall on the left and that means it was initially moving in the negative direction and then it ends up moving in the positive direction. Both of those setups would be fine because they lead you to the same amount of acceleration. If you did not put that negative sign, you will get a much smaller number acceleration, but it will be very, very wrong. We also wanna recognize that these number values, almost 2000 meters per second squared, are accelerations that are drastically different than the four meters per second squared and five meters per second squared that we were seeing for the cars. If a car tried to bounce off a wall in 0.02 seconds, that would not be good for the car. It would not be able to change direction that quickly. If we think about um, crash tests that we might see with crash test dummies, all of that happens with accelerations that are much higher in some cases than would be safe for us, but still nowhere close to these values. It's a good thing that um, rubber bouncy balls or basketballs are not living because they, they would not survive these kinds of accelerations if they were. All right, so let's get to the graph part of this. Constant acceleration situations lead to straight lines on velocity time graphs. So this is our second type of graph. There's really only two that we spend a lot of time on in this class, position time graphs and velocity time graphs. So we're gonna spend the next um, portion of this video going through some questions for velocity time graphs. So a steeper slope is gonna give us a higher number acceleration, shallower slope is going to give us a lower number acceleration. It's the same ideas that we thought about for position time graphs, but with different terms that we're looking at. All right, so in this graph, we start at 20 meters per second, and five seconds later, we end at zero meters per second. What is our acceleration value for this graph? We take the final minus the initial over the elapsed time, and we end up with negative four meters per second squared. That is the slope of the line that we're looking at, 
and it uses the equation and reading points off the graph if we weren't given the number values in words already. So we had talked about how a straight line on a position time graph means constant velocity. Now we have velocity time graphs with straight lines. So I want you to pause the video and think through these questions, and I want you to recognize that although the shape of this is similar to a graph from a previous video, it is a completely different situation, and we do not want to fall into the trap of thinking that they're interchangeable. All right, so pause the video and think through these. Okay. Positive slopes here mean positive velocity. Okay. Positive slopes here mean positive acceleration. And since we're looking at all positive velocities, we have a car, we have an object, probably a car, that is speeding up. When we ask ourselves this first question, when is the car traveling the fastest? we are asking for where is the velocity the biggest number. If you said in the range of three to five seconds, you are not thinking about velocity time graphs, you are stuck thinking about the previous type, position time graphs. Velocity being the fastest means we just look at the vertical axis and the higher up we are, the faster we are physically going. From five seconds and onwards, we are traveling at 20, meters per second, that's when we're the fastest. When we ask if this object's ever at rest, we're looking for places where it might be zero meters per second, and that is at the very beginning, that is true. And then this last question, when are we accelerating the most? That is when we are looking for the steepest slope, not the first of these three questions. So accelerating the most means the steepest slope, and that is between three and five seconds. Okay. For the next couple, we're going to have multiple choice questions. So I want you to pause the video so that you have as much time as you want to to think, but I want you to commit to an answer for yourself. No one's checking you. No one's... Um, going to judge you if you're wrong, but I want you to commit to an answer before you let the video keep playing. That way you can see if your thoughts are on the right track. Okay, so for this graph, when is the car traveling the fastest? Okay, I'm gonna keep going because you've got access to a pause button, hopefully. Uh, when we are looking for fastest, we're looking highest up the vertical axis. So at three seconds, option two here, uh, at three seconds is when it is traveling the fastest. Same graph, new question. Does the car ever turn around? All right, turning around would mean that its velocity goes from being a positive number, it's driving to the right, to a negative number, it's driving to the left. That does not happen in this um, situation. So option three here, no, it does not. And then another question for us for this same graph, is the car ever at rest? At rest means zero meters per second. That is true at zero seconds and at six seconds. So it's option two here, yes, at zero and six. Okay. Another question for us, uh, another graph for us with a set of questions that are very similar to what we were just looking at. So I want you to pause the video and work through these as long as you need to, and then we'll keep going. Okay. The object is traveling the fastest at zero seconds because it is highest up the velocity curve, the biggest number value for velocity. We don't get to negative 20, so we don't have to worry about that. Is it ever at rest? We're looking for places where it's at zero meters per second of velocity. That happens at five seconds. Does it ever turn around? Absolutely. Turning around means we go from positive velocities to negative velocities. That happens in the process of it moving, pausing at five seconds, and then going the opposite direction. So yes, in the time frame that we're looking at, it does turn around. And then the acceleration 
at five seconds is not zero, it is the slope at that value, and that slope is negative four meters per second squared. So when you look back at these questions, and it may be useful if you've been missing a bunch of these to just rewatch this video in a couple of days and go through and pause and check your thinking again, because that way you can see if you're making the same mistakes multiple times or if you're starting to figure out where your thinking was kind of off track and getting it back on track. Now, this graph that we just looked at, is the situation that we're looking at more consistent with a ball rolling downhill at the start of the problem or a ball rolling uphill at the start of a problem? And why is that? Okay. I want us to recognize that the shape of the graph is not that useful to us picturing the object's motion. Anyone who starts this uh, thinking downhill is just kind of looking at the shape of the graph in most cases, and that's fine, but we need to fix that understanding. The reason why this would be more consistent with the ball rolling uphill is if we have a ball rolling uphill, it's going to be slowing down and then rolling back downhill eventually. And that's what we see here. We see an object that is slowing down, stopping, and then changing direction. This slide here is mostly here available to you um, to be able to reference the slides, the PDF slides, if you need examples of situations where we speed up, slow down, or change direction. So I'm not going to talk through all of these. It's, it's really here as a reference to look back at. And the thing I want to end with briefly is just a recognition that we were talking about tangent lines for position time graphs, and that also works for velocity time graphs. It would tell us the instantaneous acceleration, which in our larger quantitative problem solving, we deal with constant acceleration problems. In algebra-based physics, that's, that's what we do problem solving with. But with a graph, we do want to be able to recognize that that is a valid question to ask, and we are able to answer it. So if we're trying to find the average acceleration between 0 and 5 seconds, we look at the final point and the initial point, and we plug numbers into the problem. If we're trying to find the average acceleration between 4 seconds and 7 seconds, we find those two points and we plug those numbers into the problem. And if we're looking for the instantaneous acceleration at a given time, then we have to draw a tangent line. So I'll put in the problem solving for those first two questions um, in just a second. But I do want to point out that if we want to find the instantaneous acceleration of the car at, for example, six seconds, we have to draw in a tangent line and then choose two points on that line to get the slope for. All right, so let's start with this first one. We want to find the average acceleration between zero and five seconds. So at zero seconds, we're looking at this point on the graph. And at five seconds, we're looking at this point on the graph. Whenever we try to read numbers off of a graph, we need to recognize, first of all, what are the units? And second, what is each grid box telling us? So for the vertical, the velocity, it takes 10 grid boxes to get between 0 and 2 meters per second, which means that each individual grid box is counting up by 2 tenths, or 0.2 meters per second. For the time, from 0 to 1 is 10 boxes, and so each of those is 0.1. But for our first example here. We're taking v final minus v initial, t final minus t initial. And what we get when we plug in our numbers, our final velocity, this point over here, is exactly halfway, especially if you zoom in on the PDF that we have posted, exactly halfway between 14 and 16. That is 15. And the initial velocity is 0. The final time is 5, the initial time is 0, and so we end up with positive 3 meters per second squared.
All right. For this next one, it's the same general idea. We're looking between four seconds and seven seconds. We have to make sure we're a little more careful here though. So the same equation, and it's useful to write out each time in your notes, but I have kind of a limited space on our screen. So I'm just gonna remind us that we're using that same equation. And we have the final velocity is one grid box short of 18. Each of those grid boxes was 0.2, and so that's 17.8. The initial velocity, the um, spot at uh, four seconds, seems to be two grid boxes above 10, and so that's 10.2 and then 0.4. Each of those grid boxes is 0.2. And the bottom is the final time minus the initial time. And so when we plug all of that into our calculators, and we can do the simplification first if it's a little bit easier to see, the top becomes 7.4, the bottom becomes 3, and we get positive 2.47 meters per second squared. Positive 2.5 would be perfectly fine too. And then for the last one, in the slides we talked about um, drawing it at six seconds, and that's why the line's already drawn in here. And I just wanna make sure we recognize that what that means is we look at two points on the graph any two where it's easy to see where um, the cross happens. So we can pick these two points anywhere along this um, tangent line that we've drawn. So for the instantaneous acceleration, we need a tangent line. It is impossible to answer this question without drawing a tangent line, physically drawing it out, if this is a homework question, for example. And so what we're looking at is the slope, and the slope is rise over run. And so we have the rise is the change in velocity. So that second top point is at 17 meters per second. This bottom point here is at eight meters per second. I picked places where it was at one of those solid lines so I didn't have to worry about crossing grid boxes. And the run, the change in time, that final point is at six seconds and the initial point is at zero. So we have nine, sixths or positive 1.5 meters per second squared. The difference with instantaneous acceleration is there is going to be some wiggle room when you draw your tangent line. If your number is off by a small portion, like 10% even, that's not um, so big a deal. With the average acceleration where we are looking at points that are directly on the line that's already drawn, there is one single correct answer for those two. Um, when we have something slightly different, it's probably because we miscounted how the grid boxes work. So we will see you for the uh, quantitative problem solving in the next part of chapter two. See you then.